Welcome to local television from McCroom. I'm Lisa Murphy, your presenter for the night. And now I hand you over to Pat O'Connell for the news. Hello and welcome to this week's LTV news, information and uh, sports desk. Uh, we let us start off this week by, as you are all well aware of, from uh, tomorrow Thursday. Uh, new speed limits will come into this country. Uh, the miles per hour will disappear and we'll now go over through kilometres, new metric speed limits. And uh, just for your information, to remind people that the following are the new speed limits. Now, in towns and cities, the speed limit now is 50 kilometres per hour, uh, and that will be equivalent to 31 miles per hour in the old uh, mileage. In regional and local roads, the speed limit is now 80 kilometres per hour, and that will be equivalent to 50 miles per hour in the old uh, speed limit. In the national roads, we are now at 100 kilometres per hour, and that's equivalent to 62 miles per hour in the old uh, speed limit. And on the motorways, then, uh, the speed limit there will be 120 kilometres an hour, and that's equivalent to 70 miles, 75 miles an hour in the old one. So that's starting on Thursday uh, of this week. So uh, beware when you're driving now that the new speed limits will be in place, and in Cock County, the Cock County Council have erected actually 23,000 new uh, speed limit signs all over the county. Now, we told you uh, there before Christmas about some new developments that are happening in McCroom. Um, that was down below in the Neville's Bakery site, where there's going to be a new development of um, commercial and retail units and apartments. And we have now noted that uh, Cock Cooperative Mats, they intend to apply uh, for planning permission to carry out alterations to their premises uh, in McCroom, that's down the Fairfield, um, where they want to increase the pin area cover and staff facilities. Uh, they're also looking for permission to construct a new retail DIY hardware uh, store, and also they also want to construct some new retail uh, units, and um, also a new garden centre, and all this is a welcome development again, this possible McCroom Town. Um, and uh, as we can see from these two new proposed developments down here now in the Fairfield area, that uh, if the planning permission is granted by the Town Council, that this area will become the hub of activity in McCroom. And of course, as we're also well aware, there is also a lot of planning application in with the Town Council at the moment. And that's for the construction of the new school and also retail units and housing and apartment down in Cox Street. So, uh, as I say, there's a lot of major development there that's on the way to the town. And it'll, we'll wait and see with interest what uh, pens out from all those applications. Now, uh, as we were aware of the last couple of weeks, we'll tell you about the McCroom Town Council Asian a disaster fund and at uh, close of business on yesterday evening we'll bring you an update here every week the total amount in the fund up to yesterday evening has now reached 29,600 euros and as we said before the bank accounts and the three banks the AIB the Bank of Ireland and the T Tr Permanent Trust Trusty Savings Bank that these three banks are accepting money for that appeal up to the 31st of January um, now the boxing club they are holding uh, a boxing exhibition in the sports complex in the Castle Grounds on Sunday the 30th of January. Uh, there will be boxers from all over Munster taking part in this competition. So um, we'll bring you further details about this in our programme next week. Now, McCroom Senior Citizens, uh, they would like to remind uh, all senior citizens and active retired people that they intend um, running a five-day break to uh, Westport in County Mayo in May of 2005. Now, the, the trip will leave McCroom on, on a Sunday and we'll go to the Castle Court Hotel in, in Westport, County Mayo, where there will be five nights bed and breakfast. There will be four evening meals and for the four days that you are there, uh, there is uh, different tours and different programs organised for uh, the duration of the trip to Westport. 
And in the evening, there's evening entertainment also organised in the hotel with Chenakees and Irish music and so forth. Uh, sounds a lovely trip. Uh, the total cost, including transport uh, to and from Westport, is €300 Euros per person sharing, and deposits of €50 Euros are now being taken by uh, the Prune Senior Citizens uh, Committee, and application forms are available from uh, Salon Haven, Lucy's Lane McCroom. Uh, so anybody who's interested in going on that trip should uh, make sure to apply as soon as possible. Now, so the... McCroom Twinning Association, um, in conjunction with the St. Patrick's Week Festival, this year there will be two bands coming from, one from Bewbury and the other one from Markella, the two twin towns with McCroom, and uh, the Twinning Association are looking for host families to uh, host the band members and those who travel with them for the St. Patrick's Week Festival. Again, anybody that's interested in taking a family or taking someone in for that week, would they please contact uh, Morel Kingston, New Street McCroom, uh, and she will give you further details. Now, the Brewery Gap um, this week in the cinema, uh, showing on Friday the 21st, Sunday the 23rd, Monday the 24th, right through to Thursday the 27th, uh, Ladder 99 is the film, and it's 15 PG, and that's at 8.30, uh, showing at 8.30 in the evening. And in the theatre, as we said to you last week, we have uh, this little thing at Des Kyo, uh, Love Hungry Farmer, and that's showing on the 3rd and 4th of February at 8pm, and we'll advise you to book uh, your tickets early, because this is a very good show, and they're uh, available at the very, very Gap box office at €18 Euros each. Now, uh, I've been asked also to uh, inform you or to let you know that um, there's a programme uh, starting in McCroom. It's called the Southern Helpport First Responder Programme, and this will be held in McCroom on the weekend of the 29th and 30th of January 2005. Now, just a small brief bit of information about it. It's a free Irish Hat Foundation course run by the Southern Helpport Ambulance Service, in basic life support. Uh, the course is, is only four hours long and is open to everyone. And there will be two sessions each day starting at 8 a.m. and at 1.30 p.m. with 50 places available for in each session. Uh, to book your place on this free course, if you would ring the McCroom Health Centre, that's 026 20650. And the lines are open every day from 9 a.m to 1 p.m. and from 2 p.m. to midnight, and bookings for the course close in January the 28th. Um, as I say, this is a very good uh, course, uh, and it's been run by the Southern Health Board Ambulance Crew. Now, we hope to have maybe somebody on the program next week who we can have an interview with, and they might explain further to us what it's all about. But if you're interested, uh, please ring the McCroom Health Center on 026-20650, and uh, put your name in for that course. And the closing date is the 28th of uh, January. That's all I have for you this week. Again, we'd like to thank you for watching. And as I say, if you have any news or information which you would like us to mention for you, please contact me, Pat O'Connell, at Railway View McCroom, phone number 026 42023. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Pat. The annual McCroom ploughing match was held in the lands of Tim and Nora Creedon at Machanaglas last Sunday week. Our cameraman attended the venue and interviews were done by Richard Hinchin. We will now bring you this programme. Uh, good afternoon um, viewers and we'd like to welcome you uh, here uh, to the McCroom annual playing match uh, taking place here in Mishanagbath and I'm very fortunate to have here uh, on my right the landowner Mr Tim Creedon uh, who's the owner of this fabulous site. Uh, Tim you might just tell us where we are here today. Mishanagbath, it was along the Lee Valley. And uh, is this your first time hosting a ploughing match? It is, yeah. I've been involved with the ploughing since the, nearly the beginning, longer than we can remember at this stage. Right. So I was ploughing the field and I suppose if I didn't own up today I would be in trouble down the line. That's right. 
Uh, I must say that I was fortunate enough to have served with Tim. Tim has been a uh, former treasurer of McCrum Plowing Association for a number of years, we'll say, Tim. <laughs> uh, and I was fortunate to serve uh, with you. And um, uh, you, how we came about the field, as you mentioned, uh, what were your plans for 2005? Well, I was plowing it anyway, so yeah. as I said earlier, if I didn't save it, <laughs> one up to the plowing, they were looking for a field, so... I know Paul and Paul giving it to them. Yeah, I know I happened to be at that meeting. I'd say it must have been the first time at the first, nearly at one of the first meetings that we had the site got without ever going to the third and fourth meeting because, as I said, Tim is a member, still a member of the of the executive uh, committee. Uh, when was this site, as you see, uh, and people that have attended the site will agree that it is a fabulous site. Um, when was it last grazed and what are your plans for 2005? It was grazed up to November, but... As you know, there has been fabulous growth all year, so that, that's how there's so much grass in it. But if we graze it, it wouldn't be suitable for plowing, then yeah. so it's a no-win situation. But, uh, and the grass, the grass would probably help traction a bit, as I said, yeah. but looking at the overhead conditions, it doesn't look like no, rain is going to threaten us here today. We look to be safe enough at this stage anyways. I would like to turn the tables on him for a small bit because his father and his people before him came from here as well, so I reckon he's kind of at home again today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit like the travellers, we, we have many home spots. I know looking down uh, below us here is uh, the Castle Farm in Mishanaglass, which was uh, a home of my late uncle, Dol Hinchin, and one of the Hinchin homesteads, so it's kind of home from home, and I'm delighted to be back here. Many of the time we ran around the courtyard below and uh, the Castle Farm, and I would have known Tim for many years as a young small boy. Not that none of the two of us have got any older, it's just we're young, uh, young at heart. Uh, enough of that, you're, you're, this field uh, is going to be ploughed by this evening time. What are your plans for it, Tim, in 2005? What we usually do with it, we, well, obviously it must be finished ploughing it like. Right. And we'll have a way to level our own this year. We usually level every other year for everybody else, so we'll, we usually set forage uh, peas usually. Right. And we have a still around August, make silage right. of them, and we plough it again in and receive it. Yeah. What, what type of soil would you call this um, here, uh, Tim? Sandy soil, it was. Yeah. It dries, it gets wet easily and it dries quickly again. So. Yeah. It, the farm probably would be prone maybe a little bit to drought with the gravelly nature, would it, it not? Would, yeah. If we dry weather, we've been so blah, right? Yeah. And we can, if we get wet weather, we seem to do yeah. good enough. Like. It looks like, as I said, 2004 has been an excellent year in grass, as you mentioned, and with the very mild weather, uh, there is a grand cover of grass, even speaking to some of the competitors and the spectators there, that, uh, you know, to the thin to be plowing it. I don't know about that. I suppose the, you can, the year is the cause of that. Yeah. We don't get too many of these years, yeah. I suppose. So, um, just maybe just turn it a, a small bit is that, uh, apart from the site, we're overlooking the Lee Valley. You might just outline some of the areas that, well, that you're looking at every morning when you get up out of bed. Well, your hometown is the first place we can see over That's in Kilmore, Kilmore, Kilmore to, our to our left. And, but you have one squat in him, too. That's right. And well, you have the lake and back around to. You've, we're back into, in, in nearly into Bentley, that side. Right, in yeah, Malacanich. That, you have Milok and Nish here in the background with, uh, with its mask and the Harry, Carrie Hills yeah, in the distance. Water. We live in an island here. Right. Near enough, in here. <laughs> I, I remember an uncle of mine, or an uncle, Uncle JJ, mentioning one time he was refer uh, when people used to come in from Mishanaglass, he used to ask him how are they all in the island. And people uh, from Mishanaglass will know that Mishanaglass is like a peninsula jutting out into the Lee Valley, which is another landmark that we, uh, that we forgot that's um, flanking a lot of your farm here. The, the beautiful Lee Valley stretching all the way from Gugan Barra where it rises and flowing all the way into the city of Cork, which is now the cultural capital for uh, 2000, uh, 2005. So a lovely site, both ground and landscape and backdrop. So Tim, we're delighted that, that you took time out to speak to us on behalf of LTV and let's hope that the competitors will appreciate the, the super site that we were fortunate to get from Tim and Nora Creedon and his family. And uh, is it true, Tim, that I believe um, a son of yours is playing here today? Sorry, he's playing he's in reversible, but he's not competition. He's on his own. Right. <laughs> we won't say that he'll he'll, he'll have um, an insight and that he'll know every blade of grass on this probably field. We, we'll put it down to that his keen plowmanship he's if he'll do well. He's d dedicated to it, I know, this right. is. But you know, he's he's he's, um, he's not he's on his own. There's not there's okay. no base. He's not a competitor okay. on that test. Well, and uh, he made the attempt to plow here, and we wish him the best of luck. So, thanks, thanks very much, Tim. Thanks. Okay, uh, we're.
Still here at the uh, McCroom Plowing Match and I'd like to uh, welcome one of our spectators who needs no introduction, that's uh, uh, Marit Healy uh, from Gurtin Row uh, in McCroom. Marit, um, you're after arriving on the site now a few minutes, what's your first impression of the plowing match here in Mishana Glass? Well, first of all, Richard, it's a beautiful day, number one, and McCroom Plowing always gets a good day. You see, there seems to be a lot of entries here today. And the site, as usual, is top class. Uh, I think McCroom are very fortunate in all the years uh, that I've been in involved, and I'm sure uh, since its inception, uh, that McCroom have been fortunate in getting super sites, and a lot of competitors say that we also get lay sites, because obviously it's more of a challenge to plough lay as this thing from uh, stubble. Did you get any opportunity to have a look at some of the ploughing that's done today at uh, Morris? Well, not really yet, Richard. I'm only just in, but I intend to... Uh have a good walk around over the rest of the evening in your Richard. Right. Um, I know that other years uh, you, you'd have another hat on uh, and that you would be involved uh, indirectly uh, with tractor sales and uh, maybe what kind of year has it been moving on to another field that you were involved in? What kind of year has it been in the tractor sales, particularly the second hand, which you'd be pre um, well versed in? 2004, Richard, was an excellent year altogether. And in saying that, I would like to thank our wonderful customers and their families and wish them a very happy new year and thank them most sincerely for 2004. On that, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, we leave you and thank for your kind um, remarks, um, Morris. Thank you. Thanks. Um, very fortunate to have two distinguished gentlemen uh, here beside me, none other than Mr. John Lines, who is chairman of Cockwest Plowing Association. John comes from Kilmeen and he himself a former uh, plowman in his day and on my right we have Con McCarthy all the way from Kilbritton who is the last Cahirlock of uh, Cork Plowing. Starting with you John, um, you have just arrived with a few moments. What's your overall impression uh, of the site and um, provided here by the McCroom uh, Plowing Association today? Well, it's a very fine site and very good land. And it's very rare you get a good now, like, you know. It's very difficult to get lead, lead land now, which is great to get it, and it's here. Right. So uh, it's, it's very good, I think, anyway, you know. Okay. Very good. Con, um, I don't know whether you got an opportunity to, to walk around. Uh, what do you think of the standard deploying? Or did you get a chance to have a quick, there are nearly close on 50 competitors here today. Did you get an opportunity to see some of the workmanship done here? Yeah, I have walked through the seniors and the intermediate. I'm very impressed with the opening so far. I'm delighted. I think McCroom have lived up to their high standard here. They have a fine lay site. It's a, a good test. And I, I think when it's so difficult to get lay nowadays, we at County Level are delighted to see a number of lay matches because... Uh, in some areas, lay is practically impossible to get. I think this site here will provide a fine, stiff test for competitors and it will definitely separate them in from the bias here this evening. Speaking about competitors, and I'll pass this question to John, who he himself is a uh, distinguished uh, uh, plowman. Maybe explain, John, to our viewers the difference between plowing lay and plowing stubble. I'll just remind viewers out there, it's very easy to get stubble or ground that's after being harvested for barley to plough, but uh, it's very hard nowadays with set aside and everything to get a lay site, but fortunately we in McCroom are very fortunate to be able to have no trouble in getting lay sites. So John, you might outline the challenge and the difference between ploughing stubble and ploughing lay to our viewers here, the difference in the task. Well, the difference in the text ta ta is that uh, the lay is actually easier to plough than stubble because stubble is too brittle and it's very hard to keep the sod together. Right. And it takes a lot of effort by the ploughman to keep it together on and, 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 and stubble ground, you know? Right. But you see, the sod keeps together very well in lay ground. And my opinion is that it's, it's easier to plough lay than stubble, right. you know? Because it would be very, very good to do nice work with the stubble to right. keep the sod together, you know? So the lay will be my choice anyway, all the right. time, you know? And congratulations to you for, as you mentioned, ever go about getting the site of lay ground. It's difficult enough to get it now, you know. Right. So, mm, summarising, so stubble ground is more brittle and hard to stay together where the lay ground stays tacked together. Um, so, 
Con, I know if you've got an opportunity, there is a big entry here also in the local class, which is further over. Uh, did you get an opportunity to have any look at the plowing? There is a big interest in plowing here in McCroom in the surrounding hinterland. Did you see any of the local plowing so far for the confines? Well, I, I was very impressed with the numbers that you have and the good turnout that you have here in McCroom. And I've seen some competitors here from your own parish doing extremely good work here. I think they would hold their own with anyone. I was also very impressed looking across the field here to see uh, some of the folks and 20s and uh, to see uh, the single for a uh, um, vintage here behind me. And it's brilliant to see these tractors holding their own here with the four-wheel drives and with the bigger gear. It's brilliant to see the tractors that have come out here in the very early years of this century and so a lot of them, most of them in fact, also, they, all of them are over 50 years old. And to see them holding their own here inside in a good stiff test. And it, it, it's great variety. I think the evening's entertainment for anybody here, any member of the public coming in here. The variety of classes, the scenery, the standard that, that, uh, of the laying out of the site and the way in which your car parking has been organised here. It reminds me of, of a mini all Ireland and I think that's very typical of McComb. Uh, just to conclude, the interview, I, <coughs> as I have the Cahir look of Corky, it would be remiss uh, to conclude this interview uh, without referring to the horses and uh, we would have to mourn the passing of the infamous Teddy Keller. Uh, John, maybe you would like to say a few brief words, uh, your memories of Teddy Keller, and unfortunately, who was uh, suddenly taken from us and will no longer be a distinguished character here at McCroom Plowing. John, your views and thoughts of the late... Teddy Keller, All Ireland, European, and World Champion. Well, he was he was always a very, very good plowman, a very good plowman up to the very end. And it's a pity that he's gone because if he was here, he'd be still plowing. And uh, horse plowing is very nice too, and uh, it's a great as somebody to, to take part in it. You know, at least we uh, we still keep it going. You know, so um, sorry about that. No, poor man, not a mercy in his soul. I, I think we would all like to be associated so to his family and extended family uh, we extend a sincere sympathy uh, to uh, Teddy Keller and also in our own association we were saddened to uh, when we heard of the tragic or the sudden death of our own uh, Vice President namely Shawnee Coakley who has been synonymous with McCroom plowing down through the years so to also to the Coakley family we extend uh, our deepest sympathy uh, to both the Kelleher and the Coakley family on their sad losses. Here on my right we have very fortunate to have uh, the Cahir look of the Cork East Plowing Association, namely uh, Jim McCarthy from Carrick Tool. Jim, you're more than welcome here to McCroom's Plowing Match. Thank you very much. Uh, you're very lucky in the day you have after having very bad weather yesterday and conditions are reasonably good. Um, what, is, what is your overall impression, Jim, uh, uh, of the site here and the type of soil that it is and the ground conditions? I think when you take into consideration the weather we've had yesterday, as I've already mentioned, uh, it, it's a good site. Um, certainly after the rain yesterday, if, 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 condi if conditions were bad here, it would be the site. The site certainly is very good and some very good work being done here. It's, it's early in the season, so in the second match in Cork West, and I think the lads are doing very well. Yeah, you, you made an important point there. The Drina was the first plowing match which took place in early December and as you rightly mentioned today, uh, the first plowing match of 2005 or the second one in the Cork West calendar. Uh, just speaking of your own plowing, your chairman of Corkies, uh, how did the plowing season go for you in Corkies? Do you normally plow uh, before Christmas to allow people from the West to go East and obviously uh, in January then it gives an opportunity from the East to come West. So what was your overall impression? of the ploughing in your own... Well, I tell you, we, we were looking for a finish, but early on the season we had two post moments on to in climbing, climbing weather. But um, when it settled down, then we were looking, we got good weather. OK, we, the last match, it actually clashed with, with, with your first match. Okay. That wasn't planned to go that way, the weather beat us in that one. But uh, we, we could say we were lucky, we got, we got out good enough. I suppose it goes to show that the man above in the weather uh, rules everything no matter how much groundwork and organization we put into uh, a plowing match uh, did you are you impressed with the turnout of competitors here today jimmy i am certainly you have a good number in every class and you know we're finding that difficult in some other areas you have the numbers in some of the classes especially the younger competitors and you have you have them here today and it's nice to see that
Um, another feature that I'm sure you'll probably remark is that in the local classes that there's a lot of young competitors which must surely augur well for the future. Exactly, that's what I was referring to, that the, the, the younger classes that they're scarce in other places, competitors, but uh, your look is, I say, to have them here today and it looks well for the future. Right. Um, as chairman of, um, of Cork East, it would be reminiscent of me not to mourn the passing of Teddy Keller, who would have given sterling service uh, in the horse classes in Cork East down through the years and brought uh, honour both to his locality, to Cork East, being an All-Ireland World and European Championship down through the years. Uh, your thoughts on the passing of the late Teddy Keller? First of all, I must say... It was one hell of a shock when we discovered the man had passed away. Because I happened to be in the north there at the World Plough and he was competing up there and doing very well. He did very well in the All Ireland this year. Anybody, nobody could think that he had passed away as quickly as he did. But I'll tell you, he was a, he was a colourful character. He was a great character, really. And I did a good lot of judging occasionally while he was competing. And um, He'd never complain. If he got first, he was entitled. He was happy, but if he got second and he was only entitled, you, you would never hear a word about it. And I'd count him, Teddy, as a, a gentleman of plan. We mourn his passing and there'll never be another Teddy Keller. Thank you. Uh, with me we have the uh, O'Driscoll family, we have uh, Tyg and his son Barry. Barry's competing here uh, in the under 28 and the O'Driscolls uh, come from uh, outside in the skiing near Ahi Ohol. Um, Barry, your overall impressions of today? A oh, lovely sight, you know, a good start to the year, a nice, a nice fresh feel, the day is good. Oh, we're very happy. You know. uh, are you happy with your performance, or how is the sad turning for you? Or, uh, tell me any problem that you have for the viewers. Probably could be going a bit better, but you know things are a bit rusty after Christmas, and you know, it'll take a while to get back into the swing of things. But um, yeah, as day goes on, we'll improve way, hopefully. And competition is tough today. We've five in the class, which is a bit strange for an under 28 class. So, anyways, it's, it's so far so good. Tyg, you're a regular visitor here to McCroom. Uh, what do you think of the, 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 the organisation here in this uh, playing match stage by the local association? Oh, we always envy the McCroom people. They're always has the big crowds. And when we're in West Cork, you might see a couple of dozen people walking around. In McCroom, you, you see crowds of people coming and going all day. And, you know, that's how they, I don't know how they're able to do it, but they seem to do it year after year. I I'm, I'm playing here now, or I've come here to play matches with almost nearly 40 years. And, uh, you know, I'd say I never missed a playing match, but McCroom is always, it's a little all Ireland, you'd call it. I suppose there's something traditional, I suppose, always taking place on the first Sunday uh, after uh, Christmas. Barry, the crowd must have helped. I suppose it helps, maybe sometimes it puts you under pressure, but I suppose it's nice to see people appreciating your work when you see people standing around, look at you playing, obviously it gives you that little bit of the hair standing in the back of the neck. It makes that bit better right? when, when things are going good for you, but when things are going wrong you'd feel the sweat in the back of your neck. <laughs> and you'd, be, you'd be saying, Jesus, they're thinking I'm doing an awful bad job here, you know, how can I improve it? But it's nice to see a good crowd on, it's like last year, inside in Cool Cow, it was absolutely brilliant. It was, I remember seeing buses passing the road and bus there and buses and they were just all looking in what was happening what was going on like you know it was just overall. overall you know yeah it was um it was it was, it was brilliant in, in that sense you know so it's nice to have a few around you know it's some matches there you go and it's cold and wet and there's one or two walking around and it's kind of you know you say what are we at you know but when it's not the crowd around it's nice you mentioned uh, barry uh, that you're playing in the under 28 you might just uh, tell the listeners what tractor you're using here today and what plow that you're playing with i'm using a cx90 uh, four-wheel drive case was one of the last of the case, actual case models. So the McCormick took over these. So um oh I'm very happy with a nice nice tractor. Nice tractor. Yeah. Nice, nice. Oh the cover and two for two, two for a standard match plow, you know. With some modifications, not a lot. But. Uh, how long are you plowing, Barry, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I know you're being nineteen ninety five I'd say. I was ninety five. I missed one year. I missed two years ago I was in Australia for a year, so I missed out that year. Plowed in Ireland twice. Um, so I got a second under 21. I ploughed last autumn in in um, Tullow, got fourth under 28 there. So so that's 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 the achievement so far. 
You mentioned about Australia. You might just tell our listeners what took you to Australia. Oh, a break. I, I, I had three years on in college and um, I don't know, I probably got a bit itch to travel and go and see f- other places. So I went to America, went to Australia and did a, did a bit of work there and stayed for a year and travelled around. And, uh, so very good break. Missed the plowing for a year. That Are you was... home to stay? Ah, oh, sure. Home for another bit anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the Odriscoll there you have it. We wish you the best of luck in your, in your class and may I take this opportunity to wish both of you a very happy, prosperous and peaceful 2005. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Brian McCarthy there of Threlton um, competing in the 2005 Mocker and Affirmer uh, Farron Taskill. His job is to drive through uh, this given course and must try and avoid hitting the fence poles, which are the markers, and obviously try and avoid clutching the tractor as little as possible if he can keep going. And against the given time, he's being ably assisted by his colleague also from the Trelton branch is on the home straight and getting the approval of the crowd with a big bull bus here. That's Brian McCarthy. We're up here now at the um, Mock and the Farmer section, uh, which uh, are coordinating their uh, 2005 uh, Farham Taff competition. And on my right here, we have Rose uh, McCarthy uh, from the Trelton branch, who is also competition secretary of um, Mosgrey. And also we have Catherine Buckley, who is uh, from the McCroom branch, uh, who is the National Council uh, rep. Rose, competition secretary, a lot of work attached. Tell us what's happening here today. Well, today they're working towards the national final of the um, of the farm skills. This is only a small part of, of what they really do in, in the national final. But um, it is a, a bit of crack and everyone likes to come out and s- for good enjoyment. Uh, you might just tell us a small bit, how many teams have entered today's competition? There's five teams all together. There's two from Trelton, one from Bearings, one from Croom and one from Crookstown. Right. So. And... Um, Moving on to you, uh, Catherine, I know that you, you're involved. Uh, Rose mentioned about this is all culminating to the national final. I believe you're national treasurer. Uh, you might tell us a bit um, about what the competitors have to do here. Um, the competition is divided into three sections. The first section is a question section based on farm management and general farming based skills questions. The second section was a fencing section where they had to erect uh, correct uh, fencing and wiring, um, tension and knots, etc. And the final section here is the tractor driving uh, exercise. Today they're going, it's based on teamwork and general f- safety and driving, and they're using a trailer going forward through the course and then and reversing, swapping drivers midway. Your judges here today, who have the job of picking the winner, obviously, in the markings? Um, well, it is a Patrick Buckley from Donamore is doing, is doing the, section, fen- right. the fencing. Uh, and um, Jim, uh, Jim, Jim, Jim from, from Carberry right. is doing the tractor right. driving. Uh, how many clubs uh, are involved in Mosby Region now at the moment? There are six altogether. They're all right. running fairly healthy at the moment anyway. Right. So, so you're pleased with uh, the turnout. You might just uh, mention to our listeners other competitions. I know Farm Skills is one competition. You might just give us an outline of other competitions that Mosby Region organise uh, for your members throughout the year. Well, there's um, there's a stock judging with beef and dairy, sheep. There's um, all kinds of debating. There's public debating, novice debating. There's nice entertainment competitions, capers and um, talent. talent, which will be starting in the spring. And we also are running a schools debating competition for the secondary schools in the region of Musgrave. Uh, put on your uh, sorry, cut it across you, Catherine. Put on your uh, national council cap for a minute. How does Mosgrey compare? Mosgrey region and Mocker now compare. Um, each of the regions that have county status, where before the county used to be all as one when I was involved many years ago. Uh, Mosgrey is a county in itself now. How does Mosgrey compare with the other counties nationally? 
Um, we're, we're holding our own. We're, we're very unique in, in Cork, especially because we're centre of the other four uh, regions within Cork. Well, we've got six very active, very vibrant clubs um, with loads of new members and a, a good turnover of membership and members who are active in all sections um, of Marker Life, not just specific, and they enjoy the competitions, the social aspect of it, and then, you know, the more serious challenges of attending things like the Young Farmers Discussion Group forums um, and things like that. So, um, Musgrave's in the up on the map. It's had a few national titles in the last 12 months. Um, we've got uh, three um, teams in different uh, clubs entering national finals coming into the new year. So it's got a lot to look forward to and that gives members on the ground a, a great incentive um, to, to go forward and look at what's around and put themselves on the map. I see my own former club, Crookstown, made it into national final of the Club of the Year competition. Unfortunately, look went on their side, but I believe they came down to the top six. Yeah, they came down to the top six out of 352 that entered into the competition. That's a fabulous achievement, especially for a club that was restarted in the last four years. Uh, it's, it's a great incentive to the, their neighbouring clubs here in Musgrave, but it, it's an incentive to clubs across the country who look and see, yeah, it can be done. You can start from scratch and you can go to great things. And I'm sure Crookstown will come back next year and uh, go all the ways you know and and it was a great weekend for Musgrave the weekend they were in uh, Carlo at the final because McComb were also in the national final on the Friday night where they came second in the Know Your Egg quiz so I'm um, two national finals with uh, two top six finishes isn't bad for a small little region like Musgrave. Good. Uh, just maybe to finish with you Rose to maybe the young lifters that are watching tonight's uh, program and who know nothing about Makra, what it has to offer, maybe you might just give your experience, why you joined and what you have benefits from Makra. You're, you're involved. How long have you been a member of Makra? Four years now. You might just give in a few short sentences uh, why young people out there should get involved either McCroom, Threlt and Bering, it doesn't make a difference what club, but maybe you give your experience, why you joined and what you have got out of it in the past four years. Well, I myself, I found it people within Mocker, it's a great social event to meet new people, to get out there and do different things that you wouldn't normally do on, on any night out like. Um, it is great, it's not just your club that you're meeting, it's the region, it's, the, it's, the, it's Ireland you're actually going out to meet with all the different competitions, with different outings, everything. It's, it's, a, very, it's a great social social benefit anyway and it's great all the competitions the public speaking and everything it kind of it, it gives you incentives to go out and just try it I would have to concur with someone that was a former vice president and, and who gave a number of years to Makra I suppose the amount of people that you meet is second to none but also the opportunity of competing to the highest level must surely be an experience that will stand to you for life yes. ladies uh, thank you we wish Mosgrave region every success in 2005 and we hope that Mosgrave region will continue to grow from strength to strength Rose and Catherine thank you very much thank you Christy Murphy all the way from the banks of the Blackwater down in Connacht, Christy there completing uh, his uh, vintage tractor and the single fodder plough. As you can see in the background we have another competitor, uh, Damien Murphy. Damien is situated here in the top side uh, of, the, of, the, of the land here. Damien comes from Glenmire. Our own JJ Delaney, that's JJ. Uh, playing with the infamous Horrigan's plough and that's John Sullivan and his son uh, assisting the ploughing there. Uh, JJ, member of the McCroom Ploughing Association, has won uh, a few All-Irelands uh, and won numerous classes here both at McCroom and far away. Uh, the opposition in the horse class is all the way from uh, Bantier. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the infamous Teddy Keller uh, with us, but I believe his horses and ploughs are still keeping the tradition alive here. Right, um, no stranger to uh, local television uh, is... Uh, uh, JJ Delaney and his son uh, Jeremiah. Um, JJ, your overall impressions of the site here in Mashanaglas? 
It is a beautiful sight, but the, the weather is against it. The ground is very wet on top. Otherwise, it's a beautiful sight. Probably still lucky that while there are still a few light spatters of rain about to descend here on this fabulous site, we're still very lucky that the, probably the cover of grass has probably helped help the traffic big traffic uh, ground here today that the cover has helped it a small bit I'm not too sure whether this helps the horse or not have you a bit of a cover on the ground but we we never had that problem at home this is because we hadn't the grass <laughs> the same, but uh, here uh, the grass we don't know what to do with it when we get it in the same only eat it if we could eat it we would eat it i suppose the the amount of grass that's on the site is synonymous with the fact that it has been uh, a very mild here um any problems with deploying how they're going for you generally Everything is wrong. It is all a problem. It's not so just like what we can't say a bit to the fine side. Yeah, super yeah. side. Your son, Jeremiah, is obviously picking up, uh, taking over the mental small bit. I believe that you ploughed in a few classes under 40. Maybe you might just tell us what classes and how you got on today. Is. Um, I'll tell you now. I was flying in band here and I was flying in Kilbrain. And uh, I was flying the tube and I, I won the tube. Oh, yeah. I think you made it to the All Ireland. Did you I plough under 40? You might tell listeners how you got on in the uh, All Ireland this year. I came third in the All Ireland flying championships this year. And uh, at your uh, first All Ireland. First All Ireland this year, yeah. I'm sure many a person completed in an All Ireland in one place. So to come third was a fair achievement for a man starting out. Yeah, um, yeah I was delighted. Like I was okay. delighted. No, oh yeah. Now I know the time is of the essence. There's still a bit of ground to be ploughed here, and uh, we wish the Delaney family the best of luck in 2005. And uh, who knows that maybe, even though things are going wrong for you, that you might still pull a fast one and be an announced winner later on in Cool Cow. We'll have to wait and see. It would be reminisce of me uh, to conclude the interview, JJ, without um, mentioning a famous colleague of yours, the, Ella, the Evergreen uh, Teddy Keller. Your thoughts uh, when you heard of the when the sudden death of Teddy Keller? Yeah, I got a bit shock in fairness. No, I did. And um, Teddy and myself won the team this year. We won the team prize. There's another one, another one won that. And we can't win it no more because Teddy is gone now. But Teddy was a great help to me over the years. I will say that. And I for Teddy, I'd never win in Ireland because uh, you know I know it is competition. As you know yourself, competition is the life of trade. But Teddy was a great sportsman. He'd be rough sometimes, but he was usually all right. He was all right. We could handle him right. He was grand. Yeah. Um, but in fairness, he's a big loss. He's a national loss. As a plowman, he's a very good plowman. There's no one at the whole say that. We're all scratching here today, but with Teddy, is different. Great Teddy, mighty plowman. Mighty plowman. We mourn the loss of him, and there'll never be probably the likes. And I know there was many times when he had uh, titanic battles yourself for individual awards here at McCroom and other plowing matches. But at the end of the day, uh, you just go on and win the team event at the All Ireland on numerous occasions. And I know Teddy was a distinguished All Ireland champion on a few occasions, the world champion, and even a European championship champion in his day. Uh, and you were there with the best of them. So uh, we, we mourn his loss. And as you say, plowing will be a poorer. And there was times we didn't talk, oh, but we came back again and as a team we won the team. Absentee makes the heart grow fonder, so when he came back we were even more better oh, friends. Correct, <laughs> correct. That's the answer, yeah. yeah. Thank you, you for your... Um, delighted to have here in my presence here is uh, another famous ploughman and that's Teddy Keller from uh, Bantir. Teddy, you're very welcome here uh, to McCroom. Uh, what do you think of today? Thank you for that. And what do you think of this uh, lovely site that's uh, provided here by McCroom? Mighty site, mighty site. Lovely ground to plough. And uh, is there many stones or is there any obstacles? Put your stones at the bonds of the land. 
some people down in Kerry would say the stones keep the soil warm. Would you agree with that? I would, Pat. I would. I would. Uh, maybe just briefly on your own career. Uh, I know you have won numerous All Irelands. I think probably four, and uh, you have your name is enshrined in the international stage, having won a number of uh, world championships. So maybe you'd like. Have you any plans to try and make it back to put another national title on your belt? Maybe in 2004. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know what the birthdays are claiming? And that happened to all sportsmen. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, uh, what do you think of the other competitors? A very stiff competition uh, around you. Good, good competition here today. Uh, the be the cream of the plowmen are here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we wish you the best of luck, um, Teddy, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more of you. Thank you, Teddy. Um, side by side uh, we have uh, uh, John Sheehan who is uh, ploughing here today, uh, has a tough act to follow uh, ploughing in the footsteps of uh, Teddy Keller using Teddy's set of horses and plough and that's Teddy's brother assisting him there as they leave the fodder here. Uh, no doubt it's a sad day in McCroom ploughing as we mourn the loss of not having Teddy ploughing here with us today. But his memory will live on for many a year and I'm sure that the Harrigan brothers and Teddy are having a royal time above in greener pastures, a way greener than the super superb lay site that we have here today. Uh, but as I said, uh, ploughing will be the poorer uh, without Teddy, but as I said, um, his plough is still being used and I'm sure that's the way Teddy uh, would want it. Another, another regular visitor here uh, to McCroom and a man that's probably in the winning closure probably uh, on a number of occasions is the evergreen uh, Jackie Driscoll from Bandon. Jackie, um, what do you think of the sights that McCroom Plowing have laid on and the, the Plowing match and your overall impression of today's match? Yeah, reasonably good. It's just the, the conditions aren't ideal. You know, they're the past couple of days you now made the ground very sticky and you know, I, I wouldn't be mighty happy with it today. So I'd say there's banks, good banks there, and like always, we get good, good banks and bad banks. You know, uh, depth of soil and the oh, soil itself. Soil, tough soil, lovely loamy soil. You know, yeah. I couldn't uh, expect uh, anything better in that line. Uh, I suppose due to the mildness of the winter, uh, there is a good cover of grass. Even speaking to the landowner, uh, it would have been grazed off as late as November, but it'll give you an idea of the synonymous growth that has taken place. Uh, but the grass has helped um, uh, the tractor mobility on the site here, I suppose, after the very bare site. With the weather in the past few days, it would be a lot worse. Well, yes, it would be, even though that too much grass is a, can be a bit of a problem as well, where we have... You'd have trouble uh, hiding it, isn't it? Hiding it, yeah, that's the one <laughs> big problem. Yeah. You might yeah. just outline to the viewers, maybe, what judges look for, and I know you're an esteemed yeah. judge yeah. up and down the country as well, being on the panel. Uh, what do judges, you know, people say, sure, it's only yeah. ground turned over. You might just yeah. give our listeners yeah. what judges look for and what's the difference between uh, a good plot and a bad plot. Well, I suppose uh, number one is appearance, how uh, ploughing will look is, is, is number one, and straightness. And you'll always have to have those, uh, the pine stem from skim pack and flesh, you have to have all those close enough to it as well. But in the end of the day, if you have nice, straight, neat, shiny ploughing, with no Never grass mean. showing. Oh, no <laughs> grass whatsoever, no. no, no. Uh, also, I suppose another important, which everyone would be familiar, the furrow is very important. Oh, yes, yes. Every every part of the plowing is important. If you have a bad 
Opening say out of your overbed, follow out of your overbed, catch inside in the middle, you're going to lose marks. So the more you're nearer to perfect, the better you, the chance you have in, in, in winning it. Yeah. Uh, I know, Jackie, that you have uh, worn the red jersey for Cockwith, having competed uh, at uh, national and at European and world standard. Uh, maybe last year was a bit disappointing, but uh, what's your plan for 2005? Well, I suppose I'll have another go, like always. You'll always think that you might try another year. Maybe you might get gone better. Past year no, wasn't my best year. It was one of my worst years with the, with the last 10 years, I'd say. But uh, I'd be hoping that I'll get going now again and I have a new tractor there, so you can see it. <laughs> uh, referring to the new tractor, um, it's an unusual, uh, you might just tell us, the make of it because you will recall listeners that we saw a clip of uh, Christy Murphy and Damien Murphy or Damien Ahern uh, plowing in the single for uh, with a single for a McCormick's Norton which must be over 50 years you might just tell us the link to uh, Jackie between the two yeah well uh, McCormick were always uh, back along they were a great tractor and they kind of joined up then I'd say case bottom in the meantime and they went on as case international then for a good few years so uh, the last merger there with Case New Holland, McCormack uh, bought uh, one of the factories in Doncaster in England and they changed the name. It's a Case tractor, you know, but they um, changed the name to McCormack and their boy I know is the McCormack International now again. So, uh, is today your first play match with? Yeah, the first day out here with this one. Are you hoping that... Um, on its debut here in McCrome, are you hoping that you'll strike gold in McCrome? Uh, not, uh, not really happy at all today. Uh, I'd say uh, I won't be yeah. in, the, in the winner's enclosure at all today. Yes. Well, Jackie, we wish you the best of luck uh, in 2005. And, um, I would hope, and it would be, in my, I know that uh, you have been playing. Uh, for well over 35 years, as long as I've been around and a good bit before that you've been playing, and I'm sure uh, it would be everyone's wish that maybe uh, whatever about striking gold in McCrome, that maybe someday in the foreseeable future and hopefully sooner rather than later uh, that you'd win uh, an All-Ireland senior tractor ploughing uh, title, which is long overdue to Cockwest and is, I'm sure, well long overdue to Dracula Driscoll for the sterling service that he would have given to West Cork ploughing down through the many years. Oh, definitely, uh, I'd like that to, to, to be one of my main priorities now for this year and do the best I can and hope that you know things will go my way in the All Islands. It's all it's like hurling or football on the day. If you want to hit it on the day, so no matter how good you're back long or how good you'll be next the next time. That's what counts. So. Jackie, we wish you the best of luck and uh, I'll leave you off because I know you have uh, a bank still to finish off, but you're nearly there. Okay, Richard. Thank Thanks, you very Jackie. Much. Thank you.
Um, we're here with one of the competitors in the local reversible class, none other than Jory. Uh, Jory, how did your class go for you today? It didn't go too bad, not too bad. It, it was a small bit crooked in me, but I was happy enough. Like. Um, you probably had a slight advantage over other competitors that uh, you're a son of uh, of Tim and Nora Creedon, the landowners that are providing today's site, so you could have a slight advantage in that you'd know every blade of grass and sat here in this particular field. Not really. I wouldn't know every but um, I've never grown this field before, so it was different for me as well. Speaking to your father, I believe there's over 20 years since this field, so you were only a small, teeny bopper, even if yeah. you weren't born, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, last year you won the reversible uh, class. I think it was your first time competing. Yeah. Uh, this year you're much more experienced, so uh, you're getting better as it goes along? Yeah, I'm trying away. Um, you were plowing in the reversible. You might just tell us what tractor you, you were plowing with today and what type of plow. Um, a New Holland 8560 and a Canaveral reversible. And what horsepower is the, that New Holland that you were using? 160 horsepower. So you had more than ample horsepower considering that looking at the, the site or the bank that you were plowing that there was a, a good pull in it. Yeah, I was slipping a small bit, like, but um, it wasn't too bad. Like. Yeah, I know we ran into a problem earlier in the morning that one of the competitors out by the entrance gate, plot number three, ran into slight difficulty in that um, the ground conditions got too soft for a single, or yeah. for a two-hill drive tractor, obviously, when they able to cope. Yeah. So, um, well, Jory, uh, we wish you the best of luck. I know that you were the sole competitor in that class, so you're definitely assured of, uh, uh, of uh, a prize tonight uh, in the presentation in Cool Cow. Uh, today must be a very special day for the Creedon family, ploughing uh, on your own farm or on your father and mother's farm here in this lovely site here in the uh, Lee Valley in the townland of Mishanaglas, overlooking uh, Mishanaglas, uh, the cattle farm down beneath you and the Lee Valley to our, to our left. So the best of luck and let's hope we'll see more of you in the years ahead at McCroom and other such met matches in the near future. Thanks. Um, with me here we have um, uh, Willem Lynch. Uh, Willem is the secretary, uh, secretary of McCroom Plowing, as I know well, for over seven years. Uh, is an onerous task uh, to run a plowing match. Uh, so, Willem, you must be relieved at this stage now that McCroom Plowing match is near completion. I know we'll be going to the results later on, but you're, uh, there must be a weight off your mind at this stage. Well, there is a good weight off my mind, and I'm very pleased that the day has held out, and, uh, and we're very satisfied with the entry. We're close on 50. And um, <coughs> we're, we very much appreciate the wonderful sight we got of Tim and, and, and Nora Creedon. It's, a, it, it's a, an excellent band field and, and the competitors are very pleased with it. I suppose uh, McCroom Plowing Association down through the years have been very fortunate in that they have been able to secure lay sites down through the years. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We, we have um, over 30 members in the association f from a wide spread around the, the town of McCroom. And uh, it's a great bonus to us because it helps our sponsorship immensely because it costs a lot of, uh, of money to run this, uh, close to 5,000 euros. And without, without the, the members and the work they put into getting sponsorship, which we much, very much appreciate. For without that sponsorship, this this event could not be held. 
I suppose the success of McCroom Ploughing Association has to be, and I think you have touched on it, is that uh, you have an excess of maybe a hardcore of 30 members, but on the day you would have maybe close on 50 to 60 members, people that just come out and help on the day. And uh, I know speaking to other ploughing associations, committee of the year are the envy of other associations where they might have only five or six coming to their meetings, where today you would have up to 30 members coming to regular meetings. Yeah, we, we, we would indeed. Most of our meetings, we'd, we'd have 25 to 30. We'd, we'd have five or six meetings every year, five anyway, and, and, and we'd have that on average. Um, it, it eases the task immensely of running the plow match by having such a, a large membership in the association because it spreads the workload. Um, I know you might just tell us uh, who are your fellow officers that are involved in this uh, ploughing association here with you in McCroom. Your chairman is? Our chairman, Michael Connell, um, treasurer, Mark Ambrose. Then we have um, old, old chairman and secretaries who are very helpful still in, in running the ploughing match. You have John Kelhar, you have Eddie McCall, who have a great... Um, knowledge in the history of running it and it makes the task easy for everybody. I know you mentioned Eddie McCall who is the president of the association Amanda just lives just over the ditch down here in the castle farm in Mishana Glass so as the site engineer he didn't have too far to come to draw the map on this occasion. I think it must be the first time that the site was so near him since the time we ploughed here on Wiseman's farm on this Mishana Glass peninsula uh, of land. You might just tell us uh, what's going to happen later on now this evening Willem? Later on, oh, when the ploughing finishes, all the ploughmen go go out to Cool Car House for for the dinner, and um, after the dinner, we um, tot up the the results and we announce them at about nine o'clock in Cool Car House, and um, we we've uh, Joy McCarthy playing there, and. Um, there's a great night after that. Is it true uh, that there the is, is off my shoulders at this stage? <laughs> is it true that there's no cover charge? I believe going into this function tonight, this must be the first uh, organisation that don't charge anything going into their social functions. That is true, and the reason for that is because the sponsorship we get is is, is very good, and we can afford to do that, and it it shows a bit of appreciation. If some of our sponsors want to turn up on the night, they're more than welcome. And, and they're guaranteed a good night. Well, there you have it. Um, that's Willem Lynch, uh, Secretary of the McCroom uh, Plowing Championships. And uh, uh, as, we, as the curtain comes down uh, on Mishana Glass, and this the annual plowing match of McCroom, uh, which today attracted uh, close than 50 competitors. A large crowd attended here this evening on this beautiful lay site overlooking the River Lee in the townland of Mishana Glass, just outside McCroom, on this lovely peninsular site as it overlooks the Lee Valley, with Kilmurray in the distance, Milnockanish to our right, and um, other beautiful rolling countryside forming uh, a lovely backdrop today. We were very fortunate that the weather remained good as you would expect when we come here to McCroom they have been very lucky with uh, favourable weather conditions and speaking to the judges um, earlier uh, privately they are very impressed with the standard of competition. Uh, there has been a big entry in all of the classes, as I said, with close on 50 competitors competing here. And tonight, uh, people will retire to Cool Cower, where they will ploughmen will be treated to lunch, uh, and later on, a good night will finish off what must be another uh, good. Dave ploughing here in McCroom and let's hope he'll all be back here again this time next year uh, for the next ploughing match in some other site in some other part of, uh, of McCroom. So to your viewers we bid you um, goodbye and God bless till we meet again in 2006 and as the motto of the ploughing association is God speed the plough. Uh, this is uh, Richard Hinchin here uh, reporting on behalf of LTV on the ploughing site here in Mishanaglass outside McCroom. Good night. God bless.
The last item in tonight's programme is the final part of Mert Kelleher's show. Again to the uh, uh, four members of the accordion band, Yvonne, Marie, Tim, Joe, and Quinta, to play some traditional reels. Uh, they're going to start off with my own favourite, the bunch of keys, followed by for my lasses, and lastly Sheehan's reel. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, before we uh, play our next selection, I'd like to introduce the members of the band. Now, uh, we've got um, a selection certainly from uh, around West Cork here. Now, here on my left, Yvonne Kylie knows this town. Next, uh, Maurice Belen from the Manwest. Tim Joe Reardon, Clown uh, On banjo, uh, Krita Sullivan from Balavurne. Um, Patsy Murphy from Codrum on banjo. Uh, Dennis Lee Han, Ahabolog on banjo. Um, Margaret Coakley from Rahalisk, uh, Balnagri on accordion. And her sister, Mary Coakley. And uh, John Kelleher from uh, McCroom. And Reardon, Clown again. Um, Rita Coakley from Rahalisk and um, Billy Murphy from Cosum on drums. Now, uh, we'll go back and we'll play um, a selection of marches, uh, The Maid of the Mill and Captain Dunn. Thank you. 
before I finish off my show, I'd like to thank very much uh, all the artists who uh, took part here this evening. Now, I won't try naming them because uh, they are too numerous, I'm afraid, but thank you very much, everybody. Now, also, I'd like to thank you, the viewers out there, um, Bellavorna people, Kilimartra, McCroom, uh, Kilmichael and Kilmurray, um, Coachford and Dunamore and Rush Ahina, and also Clonbrothel. And anybody else out there um, who's looking in this evening, uh, we thank you for looking in and we hope to see you again in the near future. Thank you. Now, um, we'll finish off with a selection of jigs, um, Hartigan's Fancy, The Humours of Glendart, and The Boys of the Town. That concludes our programme for tonight. Thank you for watching and good night.